Well, I'll say good evening to you, John. It feels like evening for me. It's the morning, but uh, I didn't sleep really well. So it's, you know, morning here in Phoenix and evening in Sweden. And um, I'm interested to hear about your take on the Feldenkrais method and learning music and how you used it or have used it in the past um, or plan to use it uh, going forward with the kids that you're working with, um, how you plan to integrate those two. Right. Well, of course, most people know or think of the Feldenkrais method as a, as a movement method or they, they're associated with the movements. But there was um, Feldenkrais, Dr. Feldenkrais had the idea that it was a learning method and that movement was kind of the medium that he used to to teach that, in my opinion. So it looks at learning in a different way rather than doing many repetitions until you get it right. It looks at exploring and trying different possibilities. and also to de develop your own authority, your own self-authority, which in the music world is, is, is what we're after, but there's a lot of idea that we have to teach the kids uh, or the students to, to, be, to do a certain way. And then after they've achieved a certain level of mastery, then they can begin to do their own thing. And I think you can have some of both. Mm. It doesn't have to be one or the other. I think you, sometimes you do uh, have to teach and, and I, I kind of make a delineation between instruction and what Feldenkrais said, creating the conditions for learning. Mm. So instructing would be say, you put your fingers here and, and then play this and that note is wrong. And that And, that, and, in, and creating the conditions would be having the student find uh, their own way. Mm, and yeah. I mean, there yeah, there is a lot of tradition in classical music, you know, like Stravinsky said, God deliver us from interpreters. <laughs> So you're, you're not supposed to interpret. You're supposed to just play your part and shut up, at least you're in an orchestra. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and and it's funny, though, uh, like uh, even a lot, the best orchestra players, though, talk about telling a story. Um, I don't know if you know about Arnold Jacobs and the Chicago School of Brass Playing. You know, they, they talked, Vince Chickowitz, and they talked a lot about, you know, you're an actor. You're, you're a part of a play and you're telling a story. Even if your part isn't that important, you're still saying something so you still have to i find I think it's interesting because even to do that you have to have some idea of what you're going to say mm -hmm. and you put something of yourself into it mm -hmm. and then how much of that is then part of the learning process there are times when you can't put much of yourself and you have to blend in with other people mm -hmm. and and but you're still making part of it and then other times you might have a little more you know mm -hmm. a solo or something where you you can you know add interpret a little bit more mm -hmm. 